I know many of you out there have been looking forward to this video for some time. This is the video about the completed contract method. Now, we're going to use a very silly example here, and don't sit there and write me emails and say this is the silliest thing you've ever heard. We're just trying to make an illustration here. We're not really trying to make a real-life situation. I'm sure you can come up with a real-life situation, so just bear with me. Now, uh, in the completed contract method, unlike the percentage of completion method, we're not going to recognize any revenue until the end of the contract. Now, this is not really necessarily a good thing because if we recognize all of our revenue at the end of our contract, we could get taxed pretty heavily. That's why a lot of people use the percentage of completion method because in the percentage of completion method, you don't get taxed the same way as you would in the completed contract method. Remember that every year your taxes could go up. Now I'm not saying that they will, but I'm saying that the tax rate could be raised by a vote in Congress, by the President of the United States. It could be raised, and if it is, you're going to get stuck. So the completed contract method isn't for everybody. But Let's just say we're going to build a skyscraper. And we have a contract for $250,000. Now, it's going to cost us $200,000 to build it. So that means we're going to make a $50,000 profit. And we're going to tell this guy it's going to take us five years to build this skyscraper. Now, I know realistically it would take a lot longer, but we're not going to get into that right now. All right, now here's what we're going to do. Every year we're going to accrue some expense building this building. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to debit construction in progress and credit accounts payable. Now, this is a contra liability account right here. This is a contra liability account. Now, if you remember from a previous video, I talked about contra accounts. This is a contra liability account. So each year you tally up how much this sucker has cost you. Now we're talking about buying rivets, hiring employees, uh, buying steel, so on and so forth. You're going to accumulate that for the year. Whenever you come up with the cost of how much it took to build that part of the building for that year, you're going to debit construction in progress and you're going to credit accounts payable. All right. Now, every year, you're going to send a bill to the guy who wants you to build this building for them. Okay? We're going to send them a bill for $50,000 a year for five years. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to pay you that $50,000 when you send them that bill. But, they could. So, we're going to pretend they don't immediately pay you the very second they receive that bill. So, we have a contract receivable. Remember we had all those accounts receivables in a previous video? We got a contract receivable and it's going to be debited. And then we have a contra asset account called progress billings and it's going to be credited. So each year we're going to send these guys a $50,000 bill. We're going to debit contracts receivable for $50,000 and we're going to credit progress billings for $50,000. Now, here comes the trick. This is in the fifth year. In the fifth year, we're going to debit progress billings. We're going to debit progress billings for the $250,000 and we're going to credit revenue. Okay? So we're going to debit progress billings in the fifth year. We're going to credit revenue. Now, <clears throat> we're going to have yet another account. It's going to be called costs of construction. Okay? Now, we're going to debit costs of construction and we're going to credit construction in progress. Now, this cost of construction is going to be an expense account. Okay? So, we're going to debit this and credit this. All right, and that's done in the fifth year. And when we do, then we're going to realize how much profit we actually made. And 
And if costs ran up higher than we thought they were going to, we may end up with a net loss instead of a net profit. Alright, now, the last piece of the puzzle is this contract's receivable. Okay? Now, whenever we actually receive the money from the people who are wanting us to build their building, <clears throat> we are going to credit contracts receivable and debit cash. And that will be the end of our business with them. And we hope that they will pay up the entire $250,000 at the end of the contract. If they don't, we have to take them to court, sue them, and you know, it becomes a mess. But anyway, that's the completed contract method. Thankfully, you don't have to do a ton of calculations like you do with the percentage of completion method. But, like I said, it may not be tax-wise a smart move for you if you're doing this. Alright, I will tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.